if if everybody goes to Ben's picture at the top and clicks on the little three dots, you can pin him a center yeah. screen. Right. Okay, Ben. Thank you. Is this clear enough for you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Cool. So, um, evening, everyone. Um, for those who don't know me, my name's Ben Beckwith, and uh, Derek has very kindly asked me to come down and join you guys and uh, tie a few of my favourite flies. So, this evening, I'm just going to tie some of my favourite sort of summer stroke autumn reservoir patterns, but you can use them across reservoir, small still waters, um, whatever you want to. Is this clear? Can you guys see this okay? Yeah, fine. No, it's it's a little yeah. bit little bit out of focus. Okay, let me try. Um, right, that's better. Is that all right? You see that? Yeah, yeah that's center, much yeah. better. How's that? Is that good? Yeah, yeah great. Yeah. Cool. Right, we'll go from there. <laughs> Screen. Right. So the first one I'm going to tie is um, one of my favorites. Actually, it, it, it's it's. Every angler needs a fly in the box. It's just a normal hairs here. Um, represent everything and nothing is kind of most of my flies. Um, but this is one of my favorites. So it's a hairs here with a small twist. Um, and the twist is the fact that there isn't actually any hairs fur in it. But it's sort of the <laughs> closest thing that uh, you can kind of call it to, to what it is. So um Hair is obviously great for hairs ears, but I find hair can be quite a soft fibre. With flies around this time of year, I quite like I like them to be a bit more buggy um, and a bit more spiky. So what I tend to use is is squirrel. Um, so I'll uh, I'll run you through that in a second and the reasons why. So hook and device is just a size twelve uh, wet fly hook. Um, I'll tie this fly from anywhere from twelves down to sort of sixteens. Um, you're welcome to fish them up as big as 10s but generally speaking the stuff you're imitating with this it tends to be smaller um, great fly for sort of weed beds fishing um, anywhere on small still waters reservoirs and basically what this fly represents is any sort of small um, nymphs so things like hog louse, carixa fairly sort of generally suggestive pattern First thing is the tail. So I've got a fox squirrel pelt. As I mentioned before, I prefer squirrel to hair because it's more buggy. Um, and the reason I go for pelts rather than packets of dubbing is because you get a more diverse range of fur types. So if you notice, you've got some sort of darker hairs towards the bottom as it gets lighter towards the top, it sort of gingery colors. And then obviously you get the under fur as well as the guard hair. So, when you buy packets of dubbing, you kind of get everything chucked in and mixed together, which is absolutely fine. But I like the fact that you get a little bit more diversity and you can kind of pick and choose what you want off it with, with the pelts. So as I mentioned, I've just picked off some guard hairs and that's going to be the tail. So let's catch those in. Again, you don't want anything too bulky. I like to keep these nice and sparse. Um, just to say, there's just a handful of fibers there. And just tie them in. Um, the rib on this is uh, it's called Nymphit, um, and it's a really nice. It's just, it's a bit like a thread, uh, but it's slightly thicker, and it's sort of like a pearlescent kind of blend. And this is a, a number six. It's sort of a yellowy color, and I quite like this because what you'll probably notice with a lot of my patterns is I don't tend to have large amounts of flash. I like to kind of try and incorporate the flash. In, in sort of similar colors to the rest of the fly. So it has a little bit of added attraction, but it kind of still maintains its fairly natural look. And as I say, it's a more of a yellowy color. So the body is going to be kind of a, a beige yellow, so it will stand out, but again, not too much. Um, and as I mentioned before, again, going back with a squirrel, so this is sort of like a, a squirrel mix. Um, I am detracting from what I said about the fox squirrel pelt. This is pre-mixed, but um this is a i want this to be mixed it's a mix of under fur and guard hair um and what i quite like about it is you do get that nice soft underbody fur but then you get the spike of the guard hair as well so it's a nice sort of soft combination of, of, of fibers now with this i made the uh dubbing loop but not too thick um and there's a very good reason for that i want this fly to be relatively sparse 
So if you notice, I've gone for a red thread with a very natural fly. And what's going to happen is because I've got quite a nice sparse dub body on there, that red is eventually, when a few fish eat it, it's going to show through lovely. Um, and again, it's going to add another element to the attraction of the fly. So it looks quite sort of messy now. It doesn't look very sort of neat and tidy. And the reason for that is I'm going to put the rib over and then I'm going to brush it out. If I brush out before I put the rib through, what will happen is all of those nice long fives that are trapped in there are going to get caught under the rib and you're almost going to have uh, like a reverse taper almost. So it's going to be very thin at the front and you can have all the, the, the scruff and the fluff at the back. What I like to do is I like to put the rib up first. So open turns, four or five turns, nothing crazy. As you can see, that that yellow is showing through quite nicely. It's not too much flash, but it's just enough that it comes through. So I'm just going to tie that off and snip off the waist, like so. And now I'm going to brush it out. And the reason for that, if you notice, you still keep that profile, but you do achieve that nice buggy look. So you see it's slightly sort of bigger at the front, and it slims down at the back because I put the rib on before I brush it out. Just like so, let's tie it up a little bit. Now, you can go with just that simple soft um, and guard hair mix, but at the head of the fly is generally where you're gonna find the legs and a little bit more scruff. So I'm gonna go back to that same uh, fox squirrel pelt. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going to take some of the darker fibers. So I like to have a, a darker head on most of my flies because obviously that's where, generally speaking, um, the flies tend to be, or the natural insects tend to be a little bit darker. So it's going to pick off some guard hairs. Importantly, they are guard hairs because, as I said, I want to I want to kind of recreate that the impression of legs. For those of you that use fox squirrel, you know it's an absolute pain to to dub. So you just got to bear with it and just keep working it on until it sticks. It's a fantastic material, but it is an absolute pain to tie with. Um, and then just touching turns all the way to the front to make a nice sort of bulbous head shape, as you can see there. And then I'm just going to chuck in a quick little whip finish here. Just like so. Now, let's brush it out again. So you can see you've got a lovely buggy scruffy profile, but you've still got a little bit of structure around the head area where you've got those nice guard hairs. Now, uh, I'm going to come back in with a, with another color of Nymphit. This is number three. And it's a really nice hot orange, sort of fire orange kind of color. Now, again, as I mentioned before, I like a little bit of flash, but nothing too garish. So obviously, a really, really good addition to any fly is a hothead. Um, just gives your fly that extra little bit of something that helps it to stand out from the rest of the insects that are in the water. And the reason I like this Nymphit is because it's not too in your face, but it adds that little bit of pearl, a little bit of color, but it's almost got a translucency to it as well. Just tie that off there. So unlike when you have, a, for example, a fire orange thread, um, that's quite a strong or a glow bright thread um, hothead. It's very, very strong color. It's very, very bright. Whereas with this Nymphit, because it's that slight translucency, it's not too garish for the fish. If they've seen it all, um, you know, every fly that everyone's chucked at them, what you'll find is this will often just be enough, but not too much. And that's that one. So again, very, very simple. It's got a little bit of attraction to it, but again, you'll maintain that super buggy, natural looking fly. So that's the first one. Any questions? Is that relatively clear for you? My simple pattern. Yep. I think what you'll find the rest of the evening is most of my patterns are <laughs> very, very simple, but they catch a lot of fish. So um, I thought I'd share those with you. But yeah, super, super simple, catch a lot of fish. Um, and again, you can kind of, you can play with the colors on this if you want to. So you could go with the more yellowy body if you want to go sort of more Carixa specific. Um, again, all different sizes. You can change the head, you can change the rib, do what you want with it. Uh, but yeah, really, really nice pattern.
catch a lot of fish. Pop that one uh, down there. Just on your dubbing, I've, I've uh, not had a problem with dubbing until I came to uh, Rabbit, and then I found um, dubbing wax is brilliant. It really makes it work. Have you tried dubbing wax with your um, squirrel? Yeah, so it, it's so I do. I have you, you had a BT's dubbing wax? Yeah, that's um, what you get it is, the yeah. yeah, so I, I quite like that, but on occasion I find it it has a residue on the dubbing. So when, so for example, on this one, it, it works really, really well um, and does help it to stick, but sometimes you don't necessarily get the same profile as this. Um, I find sometimes it kind of, it, I may not be using it right, but I find it can be quite claggy at times. Um, whereas this kind of has a little bit more, it maintains movement a little bit better. But again, if if, okay. if you find wax helps you, then, then absolutely use it. Um, but no, it's personal preference really. Um, but yeah, it's definitely worth doing. I do use it on river flies um, for fox squirrel bodies if I want a really, really sparse, so far sparser than this body because it just holds on to a couple of fibers really nicely. Um, so for that, I really like it because it holds and it sticks to them. Um, so yeah, no, thank you. For just, that's really good. No, I, I use it for bonefish patterns because you're putting a lot, a lot of material on, and that really helps. Yeah, so, yeah, thanks. no, definitely, definitely. Um, next fly is uh, is actually going to be a dry fly. So what I've done is I've got a cut. I've got a mixture of, of dries and nymphs this evening for you, and then one little lure is snuck in as well. But again, it's it's a relatively natural looking lure. Um, this is one of my favorites for, for reservoirs and small waters, but but mostly reservoirs. Um, it's a really, really nice of generally suggestive dry fly. Um, but I hope you'll uh, hope you'll like. So hook in the vice is a Sprite S2401, um, size 12. You can tie this from anywhere that tens down to again around 16. Um, I really like this hook. It's got a lovely, uh, it's called a spade point. So where a lot of uh, barbers hooks have just a standard curb, this one has almost more of a, a 45 degree point. So it actually find it, it holds fish a lot better, which is really quite nice. Um, thread again, sticking with the red 8 and snip off the waist. So back to my old faithful nymph it. Um, what I find with this one and uh, dry flies is I used to use a lot of, that if you guys use it, sort of fine uh, mirage or fine, Ice blue, uh, which is sort of, uh, I haven't got any to hand, but this kind of stuff. Um, because I didn't want too much flash, but I wanted just enough so you had a nice impression of, of, of colour. Um, what I did find with that is after a few fish, what would happen is that would start to slip. Um, the rib would start to slip or it would pull off fully uh, and it wouldn't work. The fly wouldn't work as well. This is a, a UV blue nymph it. And I found that when it's wet, it has exactly the same look as uh, Ice Blue Mirage. Uh, but it, it's a lot stronger because it's more of like a, a thread base. Um, so I just thought I'd share that thing I found be quite useful. So it lasts a lot longer. And obviously when the fish eat it, the dubbing gets pulled through, it maintains its its look. So the fly lasts a little bit longer as well. So that's just sort of a, a blue one. Um, it's not something that... It's something I've been playing about with a lot recently. Not something I used before, but I've actually found it to work quite well, which is quite nice. Uh, the body on this is is seals fur. Um, love seals fur for still water dries. Just a really, really great material. And this is like a mix of uh, ginger, red, a bit of orange, and a little bit of fiery brown. Uh, you can just use, you know, either ginger or red or fiery brown. Uh, but I found like recently I've quite enjoyed doing sort of blends. Um, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but you can kind of just about see the different colours that are incorporated in it. It's just a little bit different um, than, than sort of a, a standard red or, or, or ginger. And I think it just looks quite nice. Whether it makes a difference to the fish, I don't know. But this is a fly that's caught me a few, so um, I thought I'd share it. If you notice with, if that's very easy there, I've got a taper in the dubbing rook. Um, I find that just easier than, than putting on as, as I go. And it means that if I've got it right, I should be able to just tie all in one and have a nice tapered body that reaches where I want to put the hackle, like so. 
Um, and that just creates a nice, simple taper for you rather than having to build back over yourself. So with the Nymphit, it's, I don't know if you see here, it's frayed. It's a mix of thread fibers and UV fibers. So with that, it will fray. So all we want to do is just spin it tight um, as, you tie, as you're wrapping it around. And that will just help it to stay nice and strong in its shape. So again, it's going to bring that forward, open turns to create a nice sort of segmented body effect, like so. I've got about three and a little bit mil um, of space behind the head. Now, I don't want to start my hackle here or my wing, but what I like to do is at this point, just brush it out a little bit. So that's your body created, but I like on my dry flies to have a sort of an abdomen area that's separate to the main body that's not held down by the rib. Because I want to create a little bit of a bulb. Now, the reason for that is obviously with dry flies, freshly hatched or hatching, they generally tend to be a little bit more bulbous around this area. So by not having the rib going over it, it just maintains that and gives you an, a better shape on the fly like so as you can see brushing it out i'm hoping the camera is picking this up but you can see all of the different colors that are coming through when you brush it out it looks really really nice next material is some knotted pheasant tail legs so these come in two different types so you can get a what's called daddy legs um, and these ones are daddy legs so what that means is on the actual fiber themselves um, they're single strands. See, if, is that coming through on the camera? Okay. I'll take your silence as a yes, I'm hoping. Um, not, bad, not bad. Perfect. So you've got a single strand with two knots. Alternatively, you can get hopper legs, which are two strands tied together with a single knot. Now, although this is going to be a hopper, I prefer to use daddy legs. Um, it's totally personal preference, but I just think for personal, I think they look a little bit more buggy and they create a little bit less bulk so I can get more legs on um, without having to put as many fibers around on, on the fly, which just reduces the bulk of the fly a little bit um, and keeps it nice and sparse. So with my hoppers, daddies, all dry flies that have legs, I like three each side. You can put two, you can put four, you can put five, as many as you like. I quite like three. I think it gives you a nice impression of legs, um, but again, doesn't add too much bulk to the fly. And I like to have those just a little bit longer than the body itself. So three that side and three this side. And again, it's totally personal preference. You can have them on the side, you can have them underneath, you can have them on top, however you want to have them and position them. It's totally up to you. Um, I kind of go for sort of like a side middle because then they kind of, they sit in the film or just protrude the film. I think it just looks nice. But again, you can have them in any orientation that you like. Again, I don't think the fish matter really, but I'm a little bit, Pain when it comes to these sorts of things. So that's those tied in. And again, you can kind of see the shape of that fly coming really nicely. You've got the legs with a nice mix of dubbing there. The next material is something that you may or may not use. Uh, it's something that I've been playing with in the last sort of couple of years, mainly for the rivers um, is where I sort of picked this up. And it's something called Snowshoe Rabbit. I don't know if you guys can see that. It comes in either a dubbing or as feet. And this is in a, a light done color. Um, it's a material I used a lot on the rivers for dry flies. It's the fibers are effectively hollow. Um, and I find I use it a lot more on river dries than, than I use CDC. Um, both have their place, but this will last a lot longer and it doesn't clog up with water as badly. And I've started to bring it over to the reservoirs as well to fairly good success. So 
Um, I prefer it. So on the reservoirs, they use like an Antron, um, Antron wing. Uh, but I actually prefer this. It's a little bit more natural. Uh, again, does it make a difference? Potentially not, but I think it, it just really works. Um, and it holds gink or floatant really, really well and floats like a cork. So, uh, if you guys want to try some, it's really, really good stuff. Again, it's, it's a slightly more um, durable alternative to CDC uh, and works again just as well. So well worth a look. And again, it, it's something that I'd never heard of until a couple of years back when someone showed me some river flies with it. And ever since I used it all the time. So when you snip off a piece, it's got a lot of under fur because snowshoe rabbits, I'm, I'm a, I think, live in the Arctic or somewhere very cold. Um, hence the name. So they've got a lot of under fur, which is very, very small, very, very fine. Um, the problem with that is it's going to add a lot of bulk to your fly if you don't pull it off. So you can pull it with your thumb or just flick it to get those little last little bits. Uh, and then pull off all the sort of long horns you don't want. And again, with the wings, I like it to be about to sort of the, the, the back of the hook, the bend of the hook. I just pinch that, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snip that excess because what that's going to do is that's going to sit over the eye, and I don't want it to sit over the eye because, like deer hair, once you tie the stuff in, it's really difficult to to get those little ends down. So I'm hoping those ends would just sit over the head, is like that, lovely, and we'll just fasten those down like so. And you see, you've got a lovely natural again that kind of natural buggy looking wing um which i think looks really really nice so for the hackle just got standard sort of gingery cock hackle um nothing special just your standard will do and then i just measure up these to size so what i like to do is i just hold the whole cape rather than pulling feathers off and i just measure them up like so Hold them over, and when I find the one I want, just gently pull it off. Remove all the bits you don't want, and just strip it down like so. And then just going to tie this in up here like so. So figure of eight turns in between to lock it. I'm just going to snip off that waist piece. Now, because if you notice, I've got quite a bulbous head area where I put that wing in. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the fly and just hold it at about a slight angle up. And what that will do is basically when I'm tying forward, the thread and the hackle shouldn't slip. And now because I'm filming this and to you guys, it's definitely going to slip. But theoretically, um, that angle will basically keep everything uh, pointing towards the back. And it should mean that it holds first time. So I don't want to have too many turns of hackle on this because I want it to kind of sit relatively low in, in the film. So I, I usually go for around about three turns. Try and keep them nice and close together to the head and then come up. All I'm going to do, so I'm bringing the thread and the, the feather up together. I'm going to pull the feather down to about 90 degrees and then cross it over. What that does, pulling it down to 90 degrees, is it reveals the core of the, or the stem of the feather. Now, if you just tie it off normally, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be tying off the stem and all of the fibers around it. And that's going to create a lot of bulk around the head of the fly. So by pulling it to 90 degrees, I don't know if Lee Hooper's on the call, but it is a trick he taught me. Um, it just only ties in the stem uh, and it reduces the bulk around the head and helps you to have a nice small head. So a few turns and then pull everything back and then tie that off there. And then just do a nice little whip finish. Just to finish that off nicely. Like so, pull that tight. It's going to snip that. And then just snip off that waste piece of feather. Now, with the hoppers, you can do them with the hackles. You can leave it as so. Or because I want this one to fish right in the surface film, 
what I'm going to do is going to pull all those legs up out of the way. And I'm going to come with my scissors underneath and just snip all of those fibers underneath there. And what that will mean is that fly will now sit nice and flush in the surface film. So the legs will just protrude and sit in the film and that hackle won't penetrate the surface film, but just sit either flush the surface or just in the film. But don't worry, it won't sink because you've got that nice snowshoe rabbit wing. And uh, yeah, really, really nice hopper. You can play around with the colours of this. So um, you can do, again, browns, black, olives, um, anything you want to go with. Uh, reds depending on the waters that you fish but it's a, it's a really nice natural buggy looking dry fly that just takes a lot of fish um, especially in sort of summer or so months so yeah that's that one is it all just double check it's all nice and clear for you guys yeah lovely yeah two yeah, things uh, ben yeah yeah. Um, yeah when you do your dubbing blends do you, you use a coffee grinder yes yeah, I thought so to get that yeah. nice, really nice mix. Yeah, yeah, you get a, absolutely. Yeah, you get a really, really nice mix when you use a coffee grinder. Um, it's it's a brilliant tool to use. So yeah, thanks. Yeah. Another, anything. Another, yeah, another one statement. Right, uh, we had a talk by one of the Irish lads, a guy called Peter Dunn, and he's using that snowshoe dubbed mm -hmm. on the body of a mayfly. And I did yeah, a yeah. couple, and it really floats. It's unsinkable. Oh, it's brilliant. brilliant stuff. Yeah, it's fantastic stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. And, as I say, you can get it, so I have it in the feet, but I've also got a, a box of the dubbings as well. Um, and it's, it's fantastic stuff. It floats really, really well. Um, and takes it also takes floated really well as well, which I thought was interesting. Um, yeah. Floating, with, with CDC, obviously, floating clogs it up quite badly, so you've got to use dust. Whereas, obviously, with, with the fur, um, it takes it and it holds it. So you take a fish, just uh, blow the fly off, and it's ready to go again. But, um, no, it's brilliant. Really, really good stuff. Um, next fly is going to be, I'll, I'll, I'll do a, do a little lure. I say a lure, but it's, it's not really, it's, it's technically new. It's, it's a damsel. Um, damsels this time of year everywhere. Um, and fish are gorging on them on, uh, on the reservoir down the small waters. Absolutely lethal flies. Obviously you, you've got your classic, uh, blue flash. Um, is one of the best ones, but I don't know about anyone else on the call, um, but I've never been able to catch very well on blue flash on reservoirs. Um, I found that blue flash always seems to work on small waters, but reservoir fish, not so much. Um, but I have found on the reservoirs another classic, which is the Dawson's olive, which is the, the mix of um, olive and sunburst works really, really well on the reservoirs. So um, that's the pattern I'm going to show you now. Obviously, this will work on, on the still waters as well. But um, yeah, on the reservoirs, this one's been taking a lot of fish for me. So as can device is going to be a, a size 10 wet fly. I tie all my flies in barbless. Um, I used to use a lot of barb, but I don't really fish competitions anymore. So I think I find barbless is just much, much easier. Um, fish welfare as well. Uh, so hooking the device is, is, is a size 10 wet fly. And I've now got some olive UTC 70 thread. Just going to bring it down to about a third of the way down the shank. Snip off the waist and then back. And I've got some sunburst marabou. Um, so it's going to pop this down. Uh, it's a really nice sort of bright, bright sunburst. Uh, but I'm only going to take, so although it's going to be part of the tail, I'm only going to take a very, very small amount. Um, and you'll, you'll see why in a second. So with marabou, um, I like to say you kind of got three parts of the marabou feather. So you've got, waist strip it off, you've got a, a core with no fibres. You've got the longest fibres closest to the stem. And you get the nice fine tips towards the end. So what I'll often do is I like to measure the fly up because I don't want these big, bulky, um, fluffy bits. I want these nice, soft pieces here. So I'm just going to measure it up to there, and I know around about there is where I want to tie it in. So I'm going to snip off the waist, off the end, and then I'm just going to pull very, very gently. And you see the length of those fibres are very, very long, um, and I don't want that. 
So go to about where I want it to be and just tie those in like so. And when I've tied those in, you see how lovely and sparse that tail is and how much movement it's going to have as well because I've taken all of those sort of thicker, longer fibers out. One thing I do like to do with marabou is I'll just pull it up to about 90 degrees and do one turn underneath. Now, what that will do is if you notice the difference, that tail is just sitting up ever so slightly. Now, it won't stop the, the tail from wrapping, but it is um, a good little trick to use to, to reduce the amount of time it's going to wrap around. And it just means that tail sits a little bit higher, like so. Now, lengthwise, about, I don't know, what, a centimetre and a little bit. And just pinch and snip that off. Um, I often see people cutting marabou with scissors. Um, I tend to try and avoid that because you lose that natural finish. You can do it, um, but if you want a nice natural finish, try and use a, a thumbnail or, or fingernail. The next thing I'm going to put on is some olive marabou. So again, like I mentioned before, I like my patterns to have a little bit of colour, but also not too much. So you get a little um, hint but you still maintain that relatively natural looking fly. So again, that same process again, work out around about where I want the, the fibers to be. And it's gonna pull those, that excess off and get rid of that waste piece. Now, when I tie this in, I wanna be careful to make sure it sits on top. I don't really want it to go round the hook I just want to sit so it's almost like a 50 50 tail so if that's come out right on your side yeah it has so you see how it just sits on top lovely like that and that's what I wanted to achieve so I didn't want to blend the colors I want to keep the colors relatively separate but I do just want to sit together like so the next tool I'm using is called bug body um, it's a really nice sort of short four mil um, ironically, bug body. Um, it's a really nice sort of buggy fibre that I've been using quite a lot recently. And uh, it, when it when brushed out, it has a lovely, lovely um, look at when it gets wet. So um, for dams and things, if you so obviously with dams you can have big fritz bodies, you can have hackle bodies. Combinations are endless. But I found obviously, you know, for for the reservoirs, I like to fish relatively smaller patterns. So this stuff just means I can have a nice, slim, natural body, but also keep the structure. So I have messed around with having marabou bodies uh, where you tie the marabou in and you wrap it. Now that looks really, really nice. But the only difference with that is it does can tend to create a very, very slim body when it gets wet. Um, whereas I want a little bit thicker, but not too big. So this stuff is actually coming really, really handy of late. So I've just tied that in and I'm just going to wrap that in touching turns towards the front of the hook, just like so. So I bring that up through like so. And I'm, I'm going to go to about a couple of turns behind the eye and about here and then just tie that off like so. There we are, lovely. And then as I mentioned before, I'm just going to brush this out. Now, you don't have to brush it out, but if you notice how those fibers starting to just get a little bit more, a little bit softer, taking the tangles out of the frets and just creating that nice damsel shape, as you can see there. Is that coming through okay for you guys? Yeah. So it's a relatively slim body, but it still maintains a nice sort of structural shape. Um, next part of the fly is just uh, some yellow foam. So this is a 3.5 mil, I think, something like that. So it's basically just a small, small booby eyes. Um, and this is, I'm going to turn this one into a, into a booby. So snip off about the size 
that you want about yay um, and all we're going to do is just gently trim the edges now you don't have to do this but i do quite like a nice um try not to say anything uh too bad here um i like them to be sort of relatively round uh on the edges i think it i, th I think it just looks better i don't think it, it matters to the fish um but i quite like the, the shape of them looking like that just gonna catch them in and then tie them on and then it's just a very very simple figure of eight just to catch it all in like so and then that will just sit like that. You can, I do use a lot of, you know, boobies with big eyes, small eyes. I find this is a really nice one. It's, I think uh, they're called swimming boobies, um, these small eye ones, because the eyes are so small, they kind of move almost, they almost swim effectively uh, from the name, obviously, but um, it just looked really, really nice. Not too big, so you can kind of fish them with a couple of small nymphs or just on their own. Um, and they take a lot of fish, especially this one here. It's got a nice little pop of sunburst in the tail and then a relatively nice natural looking uh, damsel pattern there. But again, like the rest of my flies, really, really simple, but take a lot of fish and uh, natural with a little pop of colour under there. So that's that one. Uh, what's next on the list? We've got a another sort of, I suppose, weed bed fly. So a huge part of the trout's diet in the sort of summer come autumn time, a, a Carixa, so water boatman. Um, really, really cool, cool creatures, to be fair. Um, trout love them and relatively easy to imitate. Uh, from a fisherman's perspective, because anything that looks generally suggestive, uh, fish will eat. But anything sort of from the hairs here I tied earlier to a, to a leggy cruncher would would do for for a for a water boatman or cricketer pattern. Um, with this one, I'm I'm not necessarily getting any getting technical, um, but I found this pattern works really really well, and it is a little bit more. There's a few more factors to it, um, and it does look very, very natural. And I found it has taken some of the better fish I've had so far this year, purely because it just looks exactly like a water boatman. Um, but again, you can still take big fish on general suggested patterns, but this is just me having a bit of fun and, and finding something that worked. So hook in the vise is a Partridge SLD4. Um, really nice it's one of their new ones i think you can get them from most places but the reason i like it and you'll see why in a minute is it's going to have a foam post um and i like the short shank and the wider gape on uh, on flies i have with foam post because i find that it's got a little bit more um space for, for good solid hookups that's sort of a, a light cahill yellow kind of thread so just start that off what size hook down sorry what size hook was it? Uh, size 12, sorry, oh. yeah, size 12. Um, but again, with Crix, you can tie them up to 10s and then you can tie them down to the 16s. Um, but yeah, this is just a size 12 for, for reference um, in, the, in the video. Um, five mil booby cord. I will go smaller for obviously the smaller fly, so I'll go down to a four mil for a size 14 and a three and a half to four mil for a size 16. Um, but five mil on a 12, so stroke 10 is, is is pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I've just snipped uh, at an out about a 45 degree angle um, down the edge of the foam. So it's just sit just like that. And what that means is when I put it on, it's not, you're not tying in the bulk of a full five mil post. Uh, you're just catching in a small amount so it will taper nicely and not build up too much bulk on the fly so i'll catch that in and just tie that down lock it down like so lovely stuff and then just make sure that's nice and secure 
that'll sit just like that. And you see, I've got a little bit of space where the eyes where the eye is, so it's not covering, it's not clogging it. Um, so it's nice and accessible when you want to put your leader in. Sometimes when you tie them, if you tie it too close to the eye, you don't leave that little bit of space here. What can happen is it will clog over the eye um, and it's hard to get your leader through. Whereas this just means that you've got that little bit of extra space to, to work with. So first material is going to be cartridge. Again, like with the fox squirrel, I like to buy it in a full skin. Um, and again, reason being is the fact that you get a nice diversity of material. So on the back side, I've got a lot of the darker um, fibers. And on this side, shorter, more gray, natural kind of colors. So by having the full skin, it just gives me that little bit of variation. Um, for example, if you buy partridge in packs, uh, yes, it's cheaper, but almost this is more of an investment, I suppose, because in those you might get one or two that you can use for a hackle. Um, the rest are usually too long or, or random. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these brown ones. And this is going to become the tail. So again, I do quite like sort of natural, uh, natural materials for these sorts of things, especially things with natural bars in them, as you can see with the partridge here. It just looks really, really buggy um, and really, really nice and natural. So I stripped a few fibers off. Now, Crixa don't actually have tails, um, but I do like to just have a very, very short one, um, just like so, because I just think it adds to the fly nicely. Um, does it need it? Not really, but again, personal preference. I quite like it on there. The I put a little butt on this. So again, back to what I keep saying, it's a little bit of color, a little bit of flash on these patterns. Just just separates your fly from the rest. So this is a, a uni mylar and pearl. Um, you can use Mirage. I find Mirage is, is quite a sharp kind of pearl. It's very, very, very bright. Whereas the uni mylar is, is a translucent pearl. So it's not too in your face. Um, but it's just enough that it does catch the light. So it's going to catch that in. And it's going to tidy all of this up at the top there. And with this, just doing a couple of turns, you only want a small butt. You don't want too much of it. Realistically, you want one turn. One turn's worth of pearl, but I usually do two because what that means is you've got that extra locking turn to secure the pearl in. If you only do one, it is liable to slip. Um, so two just means you've got it secured in and then you tie over that second turn and it locks in that first one so it's not going to move just going to snip that off there the next material um, is just some brown uh, thin skin and uh, unlike Blue Peter I did not prepare this earlier so I'm going to quickly cut this now so the nice thing about this stuff is you can get it in uh, pre-cut strips which are about two three millimeters or you can get it on sheets um, I quite like the sheets because they can cut it to size so for example um, on this one I like to have a, about three maybe yeah about three and a bit mil uh, whereas on a 14 on a slightly smaller 16 even smaller with the sheets I can cut it to size um, with the strips you kind of stuck with 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 what you've got so just snip that off and it comes with a little paper back. Just going to pop here and nail in. Just peel that off like so. So all you're going to do is you're going to cut the end to a point. Like so. And you just want to catch that in. Just around about there. Again, try not to go over that, but you want to come up to where that pearl butt starts. And not go over it so you see it's going to be a nice shell back over the back or over the top sorry a little pearl poking out i'm just going to bring this thread up try and catch some of those rogue fibers in like so um bug body again really like it it's a really cool material this ties an amber color so the olive before i've now got the amber 
and it's a really, really close color copy to Carixa. Um, again, that nice sort of four mil strand. So just going to snip off the end there where it's frayed a little bit and just catch that in. And uh, tie that down again. You want to tie it all the way back? Is that material from, from Uphaven, Ben? It is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Uphaven fly fishing, if you want to get hold of some. It's, it's really quite nice stuff, actually. It's one of their, I think it's relatively new to them, yeah. um, but I've been using a little bit. I, I, it's really lovely. Um, so, yeah, just wrap this again, sort of touching turns. Uh, bring it all the way up. Like so. Now, if I pull the foam forward, you'll see there's about a mil and a little bit of space. Um, I'm going to stop here and again come back with that 90 degree I could do with a hackle cross because I don't want to build bulk here because that's where my hackle is going to go. So I want to keep that nice and uh, nice and slim for the moment and then just snip that off. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do a quick little half hitch whip finish, single turn, just drop that in. That means that when I then brush out this material again, if I knock this, it's not going to unravel. Um, too many times I've tied a fly, got to this stage, knocked it, and especially when you're tying small 16s, it drives you nuts. So just a little half hitch just means that if you do knock it or anything like that, it's not going to affect your fly. So same as before, you're just going to brush this material out. It comes out really, it's almost like a, it's hard to describe with threads. It's like a yarn almost, um, but it's lovely and soft and it brushes out really nicely. What I'm going to do is just brush that through like so. And you can see how it almost kind of becomes one, whereas before it had the fibers, it's now kind of one kind of shape. Just going to snip a little bit off the back there. Where I'm going to bring this forward. Now, I'm going to push all this material down to the sides, like so, uh, because that's quite important. That's going to become the body. So if you just pull it over, you're going to miss out on some of this material. It's going to be wasted. So just put it down the sides and then pull that cover over. Like this little bit. There we go. There we are. Lovely. And you're going to pull that nymph skin over. So you now, if you can see, you've got that lovely, nice uh, shell back. You've got a little bit of pearl poking through, and then this this body underneath. Now, what a tip I like to give when cutting nymph skin is don't do it in one because if you just do it in one cut, you're going to get a really you're going to get a square cut, and then you're going to have the two ends poking out. So what I like to do when when I cut it. Anything like shrimps or crypto, anything like that, is just do it in stages. So I snip one edge, then I come into the middle, snip the middle, and then I slip the far side, like so. And if you look at, I don't know if you can pick it up, but you see that it's got a curve in the cut where I've cut it into three. And that curve is basically just going to curve into the fly, and it makes it a lot easier to tie it up when you tie it off. Now, all I'm going to do now, I've got a pair of curves, which makes it a little bit easier. So I'm going to come behind the thread, because if you can't see in front of the thread, you're going to cut the thread. So if you come behind it, and then just look to snip that bug body into the shape that you want it to be. So before it was quite big, and now you've got that lovely corrects a body shape like so just like that so you've got a nice small corrects a sort of bulbous almost body like so there we are is that coming through okay on the on the footage nice and clear for you yeah i like that magic cool so again as i mentioned before the reason i go for a whole skin is because you get that variety of fiber lengths and, and, and hackle lengths. So because I want a relatively small hackle on this, I'm going to go through the head area. So the further to the back of the wings you go, the longer the fibers and the partridge get, 
the closer you come, the smaller the fibers are. This is where it does get a little bit fiddly um, and you may go through a couple of feathers trying to, to get it to, to work um, because obviously the smaller the fiber or smaller the feathers, the slightly weaker they can be. But a bit of trial and error, you should be fine. So what I like to do in partridge is I like to strip the end off, put my hackle pliers on the tip of the feather and then just gently, very, very gently brush these fibers down. And what that means is it just gets them all out of the way, ready to be tied in. And then bring a couple more. So the weakest part, obviously, of this feather is, is the tips. You'll be very, very careful when you tie this in. And when you wrap it as well, not to break it. So just going to present that over the back of the fly. Just come in some locking turns. And that just sits in there like that. And then snip off the waist, please. Now, back of the hackle pliers. And um, in fact, what I'm going to do is some of those fibers are a little bit longer than I want them to be. So I'm just going to pull those straight off. Get rid of those. I don't need those. Now, all you need on this is, is one turn. And that should be enough for you. And then it's going to tie that in. Now, with partridge, what I find is Unlike a, a cock hackle or a hen hackle from a chicken, the stem of the feather tends to be quite weak. Um, so what I like to do with partridges, I'll actually go and I'll wiggle so I don't catch too many fibers, but I'll actually tie into and over the stem when it's on the hook. And what that does is it locks that stem down. It doesn't affect the, the fibers as they are, but it just gives you that extra security and makes that stem really, really secure on the hook. Carefully pull it all back and then tie it off like so. Uh, and now you're going to come to the front of the fly, pull that post back and then just whip finish like so. It's a really nice buggy looking Corixa pattern that's been working really, really well this year. You see the back there a nice shape and how it will sit is it will sit just like this so that post will sit really nicely the, the fly will just sit in, in the film or just under um, and the fish will just come and mop it up yeah really really good fly caught me a lot of fish and uh, yeah give it a go uh, next one is going to be another nymph so uh, well, I suppose no one on here knows me, but I love nymphing. Um, it is all I ever want to do when I go fishing on the reservoirs. Um, it's just a great way of catching fish. And uh, if I could just fish one method for the rest of my days, it probably would be be twiddling a team of nymphs. Um, this fly, I, I'm assuming most of you, or if not all of you, heard of the Nemo Cruncher. Uh, see a sort of classic red Nemo. It's sort of my take on that. So again, I'm coming back to the idea of, of making it slightly more buggy for this time of year around the weed bed. So for cricks or hog glass, things like that, it will obviously work. Um, the original will, will work probably outfish this one, but this is what I designed. I really quite like it. So hook in the vise again is going to be a, a size 12 wet fly. Again, you can tie this 10 down to a 16 for the reservoirs and uh, small still waters as well. This will work throughout the year, but I really quite like it for this time of year in the autumn time, summertime. Fishing around the weed beds, have a, a small booby, like a small damsel booby on the point, and a couple of these that we cast maybe a hare's ear and uh, pick off some of the better fish that are residing there. The thread again is the red uni from earlier. Just a really nice, nice thread to use for this fly. So, start your thread off, come to the point of the hook, and then just snip it off. Um, the only difference between my Nemo's and the originals is is the hackle. So I really quite like it. It's a Cree. So Cree is like a, a brownie grizzle hackle. 
So it's got sort of elements of brown, uh, ginger, black, uh, natural. It's a real mix of, of, of colors. And I just really, really like it. It's very, very buggy, very, very natural looking. Um, and I, as I say, for this time of year, I love that kind of look on a, on a fire, that sort of buggy, kind of barred look. So when selecting tail fibers, I like to put them 90 degrees. What that does, it just lines up all the tips. Um, again, you don't have to do that, but I'm a little bit OCD with my flies, so I do quite like a nice, neat uh, tip like that, so like so. Pinch and just pull off. So tail length, I quite like just the length of the hook shank. I generally find that's a, a, a pretty good um, way to measure it up. So from just behind the eye to just before the bend, hold that over and then just tie that in like so. Just two turns um, and leave it there. Skip off my waist speed. The next tool I'm going to tie in is just some small silver wire. Um, you'll notice that I didn't tie all the way down to the bottom of the tail. The reason for that is this fly has two ribs and a body. Now, what that means is if I tied it all down to the tail straight away, you'd have a very, very big bulb at the back of the hook where I've tied everything in. Instead of that, I'm going to tie it in gradually so you maintain a nice smooth body. So I've got my silver wire. I'm going to put it to the same length as the snipped off pieces of the aqua fibers. And I'm going to do two touching turns behind those first two. So I'm still moving back, but I'm not building any bulk in a specific point on the hook. Next tier is going to be some fine or small red holographic. Um, the Nemo's you can tie with medium and small. Again, I like small because it's a little bit of flash, but not too much. So as I say, all of my flies are exactly the same. Little poke of color, little poke of flash, but nothing too garish. Again, same length as those cock fibers, and then two turns behind, so I keep moving back. Body on this is just some natural brown pheasant tail. Um, plenty about. One thing I would take note of is these are both natural brown. One's quite dark, one's quite light. I do prefer a darker one for bodies. Um, it's again, it's up to personal preference, but I the original is, is a darker. I use a darker a lot and I find it me I, I prefer it but you can use whatever you like i'm only going to take two uh fibers for this one so if i was tying a size 10 i'd have three fibers um and then for 12 down to 16s i like two fibers i don't want the, the fly to be too bulky um i want it to be nice and sparse i'm just going to chop chop the tips off and again that same same again up to where the uh, the cock hackle is and the, and the two ribs. So by doing that, when I come up to the top of the fly, all of the materials are going to be stopped at the same point, which means the body is going to stay level to the end. Tie these back. So this is a barbless hook, but I'm just going to tie it off to the point where a barb would be. And then when I'm happy with that, touching turn, catching everything in nice and neatly. Catch it all in like so. And all I'm going to do is then come back a little bit, about halfway down, and then back up to the front. And then halfway again, and then back up to the front. And that will build a very, very slight taper um, to the fly. Uh, touching turns of the pheasant tail all the way up to the top. Um, with this, I'd, I'd normally put uh, a very, very fine layer of super glue uh, underneath, but because I've got two ribs, it doesn't really make a huge amount of sense to do that. That's going to catch that in. If I was just doing a, a holographic rib, 
um, what I would do is these off. So pheasant tail, peacock tail, both quite weak fibers. Unfortunately, I absolutely love patterns with small holographic ribs. But as mentioned before, with the ice blue on the dry flies, it doesn't last very long because it's quite a thin fiber. So what I'll do is when you tie the the ribbon, especially holographics uh, and tinsels, is when you when you hold it to tie it in, the side facing towards you when you go to tie in is going to be the one that touches the body. So what I like to do is I take the, the super glue brush and just very gently run it. Don't dab it, just run it across um, the side of the tin so it's facing you. And what that will do is that will super glue the rib to the body material. By doing that, you're not only securing the rib really strong, but you're also getting small traces of super glue underneath that body as well. So it's like a double securement. Um, and I find it, especially if I'm trying to tie flies quickly, just means it's, it's a quicker way of doing it rather than um, if you just do the body, for example. Um, if you miss it, if you miss a turn or it's not quite touching, trying to take it off just doesn't work. So with the rib, it just makes it easier and does the best sort of kill two birds with one stone. So for the rib, what I like to do is I'll just do a couple of turns as a small butt, like so. And then about, I don't know, about a millimeter in between turns on the way up. Now I'll always, always do ribs, do a turn on the bear hook. And again, it's just that sort of securing turn. It makes it easier to lock it down with your thread. What, what I find is if you come straight off the body and tie off without that securing turn, it just means that's liable to slip because you've got uh, almost like a diagonal um, angle of the rib next to the body. So if anything down here slips, the whole lot's going. If you do that securing turn on the or on the thread of the hook, it just means that it's it's an extra locking turn. Um, it's not connected to the body, so it just holds a little bit more securely. So I wrap the pheasant tail and the tinsel in the same direction, so away from me. I'm now going to wrap the, the wire towards me. And that's just going to lock it all in. And again, you want these open turns. And with these, you want them a little bit wider, to so about two mil apart. So you, because you don't want to cover up the red and the brown, you just want to secure it in like so. And then with wire, just wiggle to break. That's looking very, very nice like that. Perfect. So again, back to that kind of premise of I like quite a buggy fly this time of year, sort of legs, corixa, hog glasses, and shrimps are kind of what your the the general diet of the fish will be. So I don't know if any of you guys use it, but I really like legs on crunches. Um, leggy crunches are a really, really good fly. It just takes you to sort of standard pattern to that next level. And again, back to sort of daddy legs. Now, these are, as I mentioned before, I've got the, the darker feather here um, and the lighter feather here. I actually quite like slightly lighter legs because I generally find that legs on shrimps and hog glass are lighter than the body. So, so you've got quite a dark body. I like a lighter pair of legs. Again, I'm very, very sort of anal with this kind of thing. Does it make a difference? Probably not, but personal preference, I do quite like it. So same as before, I like three legs on each side generally. Um, but for this one, I'm just going to put six underneath um, because all of the legs in this one are going to go underneath. So pinch them and pull them off the, off the strand and then just position those. So the tips are just going past. You don't want them to, to be as long as a tail. You want them to just go past the bend of the hook there. So I'm just going to tie those in nicely underneath. You see how they look looks really, really buggy. So you've kind of gone, you've taken a standard cruncher, you've just taken it to that next level. Um, and again, it'll work really, really well on small waters as well. Just a simple, simple addition, just takes that fly, just changes it completely. The next material, uh, which I've managed to misplace, here we go. That same dubbing from earlier, so that mix of uh, ginger, red, brown, um, orange. 
just going to put a tiny little bit of that in. So the original was tied with uh, peacock curl, but with this one, I do quite like this little pop of colour. And again, it's a little bit buggy as well. So it's still keeping it natural. And you can brush hard if you want to a little bit. But it just all cloaks into that kind of lovely um, tapered shape. Back again with the Cree. And uh, again, as before, you're just going to pull fibers down to find the right one and select them and then just pull it off like so. So one thing to note with the Cree, what you'll find is that the brown of fibers will tend to sit, sit closer to the tip. Uh, and you'll be sort of more classic badger, not badger, sorry, grizzle hackle towards the bottom. So like classic white and black. I don't want the white and black. I want these kind of brown tips for this kind of this pattern. So what I'm going to do is just going to strip down and pull down to, 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 to focus those first few turns on um, those brown tips. Like so. And then it's going to tie that in. Like so. And then just do, uh, again, that back to that figure of eight. Put it all back and then just tie it off like so. And then snip off your waist piece. And then grab the tip with your hack pliers. And then with the crunchers, I just like a couple of turns. You don't want them too bulky. Just a couple of turns, just to sit like that. Put it all back. Tie off the head like so. And just pull to break. And then whip finish. Like so. And that is a little leggy cruncher. Again, simple, sparse, buggy, but fish get mad for it. They love it. And uh, in the colours of your classic sort of summer food, your hog lice, your shrimps, Carixa kind of represents them all in some capacity. But yeah. Um, that, that, it, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. It's got a bit of colour, it's buggy, um, and hopefully it kind of, well, it does work, but uh, hopefully it works for you guys as well. And uh, that's uh, that's all I've got planned. I don't know if I've got any more time or if I've done that too quickly or what's what's the consensus. No, you've got plenty of time if you, got, if you want to do a bit more. Uh, yeah, I can do one more. Just a quick question. Uh, yeah. So, sorry, Ben. You like um, fishing nymphs? Uh, yeah. Fish for straight lining. That's what I'd really love to do. Yeah. Lo love straight lining, straight line, washing line. Um, love all of it. Uh, it's just, it's it's a really lovely way to fish. I think it's one of the, the most natural, obviously, aside from dry fly, most natural ways to fish. Um, and again, it, it tends to pick out those better fish, which is really nice. Yeah. Really slow. Just keep in touch with them. Yeah. <laughs> It's exactly right. Hold, yeah. holding on um as i say i yeah. fished uh, i remember i fished uh last year with a guy on blagden and uh it's around september october time we're fishing daddy long legs and nymphs on a washing line and uh i i, I think I was, I was sort of 15 fish up on him and i said just just stop moving them and he was like i'm not and i said you are i said as slow as you think you're fishing them you're not i said the way i described it to him i said static is too fast I said, if you think you're fishing a static, you're fishing it. If you're fishing them at all, it's too quickly. And uh, I turned around and said, I said, right, watch this. And I, I cast out and I sat on my hand. And I said, right, just watch. And the line tore away. Um, and I said, right, that's that's what you need to do. So you're absolutely right. Static, just keep it in touch if you must, but generally just leave it um, and wait for those fish to pull away. But no, yeah, yeah, love it. Absolutely love it. Um, Brilliant, brilliant way of catching fish. Uh, what can I type in? You, you, you put me on the spot because I haven't actually, I, I thought this would take me longer than it has done um, to, to tie these up. 
In fact, what I'll show you is I'll show you a really nice, um, what can I do for you actually? I'll show you a hog glass if you want, a nice little hog glass pattern. Sounds good. Um, yeah, cool, let's do that. Um, so again, kind of if you want to go sort of into, into specific patterns, uh, like that Carixa. So I think the wonderful thing about uh, fly tying is that you can create the super specific patterns, but you can also have those sort of generally suggestive. So that hare's ear or, I don't know, squirrel ear, if you want to call it, <laughs> um, at the beginning kind of represents everything. So it will cover Carixa, it will cover shrimps, um, and it will cover hog glass. But again, that crick I showed you earlier, it's kind of the opposite. So it's a very specific pattern. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another one of those. So the hog glass, again, represents a large portion of the trout's diet, especially fish feeding around the weed beds. Um, you can you can represent it with everything, but this is quite a nice sort of specific pattern for them. Um, I'll get into a bit more of it as I go. So back to that size 12 uh, wet fly hook. And then just a, a light K hill yellowy thread. Um, and then again, back for tail, we're going to use a bit more of that uh, partridge. Again, it's just a really nice, natural, buggy looking material. I really like it. Uh, it. It kind of covers everything you want it to do. It's it's soft, it's mobile, um, and it's got a lovely colour and the barring to it. And that's what I really like about it. Um, it's just it's got that as you can see there it's just it's just fab it's it's perfect for sort of natural flies again I've kind of gone for that back side so you've got the darker brown fibers hog glass is, is more of a brown with a beige so I've gone for the slightly darker fibers I think it looks, it looks a little bit more natural so um, with this one again put it sort of 90 degrees pinch and pull especially important with with partridge feathers because um in fact i'll explain that when i tie it in otherwise i'm going to drop it so it's going to tie that in like so so especially important trick with partridge feathers i use it obviously for all feathers but if you look at the so the length the difference in length as it goes up the feather you've got a really quite steep angle um so by pulling them to 90 degrees on the stem, what it means is all of those fibers match up together. Otherwise, you're going to have a tail that long with bits that are half the length and it just won't look as good. So 90 degrees just means everything lines up nicely. It's less important on cock hackles, obviously, because they're all the same length. If you've got a saddle or pretty much the same length on a, on a standard hackle, on a neck hackle, um, but for shorter length feathers like this, it's so important to have that 90 degree to keep it all lined up. So I've just tied that in. I'm just gonna, basically what I'm doing is, it's a little bit short on the tail at the moment. So I'm just gonna hold, hold the, the, the tail, gently release on the thread and just pull it very, very gently to there. And that's a little bit, gone a little bit too far there, so. I'm just going to tie it in right about there, magic, and uh, tie that down like so. It's a nice little tail there, and then snip off that waist. So, rib again, just going to go a bit of standard silver wire, um, nothing, nothing special, nothing crazy, uh, but just again, a little nice pop of color. You can use gold, you can use copper, you can get brown wire, um, whatever you want. But sometimes in these sort of very, very natural flies, I do like a sort of a silver or a gold rib. It just has that little bit extra to it. Um, looks quite nice. So back again with the nymph skin. And again, you kind of want a piece that's around about two and a half mil wide. So not quite as wide as the Carixa because hog glass tend to be quite a hog glass are, are fairly similar to shrimp. Um, but where shrimp are kind of a, a curved grub shape, um, when they're kind of static, they obviously go straight to when they're when they're swimming, but um not when they're obviously static, they have a, a curved shape. Hog glass are always 
more of a sort of parallel body shape. So that's why I tie it on a, on a straight shank hook. And uh, I'm just going to tie that in there. So just as such, again, snipping to a point. I'm just going to tie it in. Like so. Uh, magic cool. And then lock that all down to make sure you're happy. That's a good length. And as you can see, it's not going to be too wide. If it picks it up there, that's better. It's about a nice width. So with, with the, the nymph skin, you don't want it to kind of cloak the sides. You want it to sit just, just above the sides um, of, of the body. If it comes down too far, you end up having a lot of um, dubby material quite stuck in together and you kind of you lose the movement that the dubbing can create. Whereas if it's just cloaks it, it holds a dubby to point downwards, but it's still allowed and able to sort of move naturally in the water. So we're going to go back with the same dubbing as before, which is that lovely um, squirrel mix. So it's a mix of squirrel guard hair um, and under fur. Again, using the, uh, the, the coffee grinder to, to mix it up. You can do it by hand, um, but it takes ages and you can only really do small amounts before you lose the will to live. So uh, use the, the, the machine and it does it all for you. And you can get really, really nice mixes. So again, relatively sparse in terms of the body. You don't want to kind of build too much into it. Uh, and I'm just going to wrap that all the way to the front there. And you're going to pull over that uh, skin, like so. And then just simply, again, as before, you want to wrap the rib before you put it all out as we did with the shrimp. Nice open turns with the rib. Tie it off. And then a little bit, just a tiny, tiny bit more just to cover that head. Not too, I mean, I'm talking a really, really tiny bit. Put it all back and then we're just gonna whip finish. You'll notice I've left this bit out the front. So if you see a, a real hog glass, they've got a little bit protruding out the front of their heads. So what I'm going to do is just snip, snip square. So it sits like that. And I'm just going to take the edges off like so. So you've got that nice little sort of not, not a point to the head but a little bit of shape to the head, just coming off the, front, off the front there. And then back again, just to really scrub it out. And that's a really, really nice, natural, buggy hog louse. But again, it's, it's as simple as you can get. It's three materials or four materials, but it will take a lot of fish for you. It's a lovely little pattern. Yeah, any questions on that one or? They're all muted at the minute. No, we're quiet. I hope that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, really, really good little fire that one. Um, again, captured loads of fish, super simple. If I'm honest, I'd probably fish um, the cruncher or something like that over it. Um, if the fish are really keyed on or if I'm targeting maybe better fish, then I would probably tend to fish sort of more natural, specific imitations. But it, generally speaking, generally suggestive flies, I kind of prefer. And again, it's, you know, if you're a fish, you're going to take the supernatural and you're going to take that one with a little bit more oomph to it. But again, it's, it's one of those ones, if you've got it in the box, you can, uh, you can use it. But yeah. That's that one. And okay. uh, it, yeah.
thank you. I think uh, that's probably without running to my uh, tying desk, which is on the other side of my bedroom. <laughs> that's uh, that's a wrap, I think, if that's okay. Andy, can you put uh, take a photograph of them and put them on the WhatsApp group for us, please? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, no worries. Has anybody got uh, any questions for Ben before we go? No. Any questions? No questions. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah. I hope uh, I hope you all enjoyed that, and thank you very much for um, waiting patiently as I <laughs> tied a few flies for you. Um, I'll chuck a, I'll chuck photos in the uh, in the WhatsApp either this evening or tomorrow morning when I get some some better light outside for him. So, yeah, thank you very much for having me and uh, thanks for doing yeah. it. Cheers, man. You're very welcome. Thank you very much. Good night. I hope you. Uh, Cheers, you thanks, do, thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks, Ben. If you do, thanks. If you do Derek. tie them up, let me know. I'd love to hear how they go. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers, Ben. Cheers, all. So have a good one. Cheers. Sorry, Ben, I joined oh, late. How's oh, you how you doing? You're right. <laughs> yeah, not bad, mate. You? Yeah, tidy, pal. Thank you. I fell asleep in the chair before you started. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you didn't fall asleep after I started, that's it. <laughs> I've done that before as well. <laughs> Love it. No, magic. You are right. Yeah. Yeah, good. Very, you very finished good. your degree yet? Yeah, I finished last year. Bloody hell, time goes. It flies, isn't it? I haven't seen any youngs. No, being like you, you still you abroad or living in the UK? No, I'm back in the UK now. Um, 